Hey guys, welcome back to another Dynamics Physics in the Flesh episode. This one on lawnmower forces. A person pushes a 13.0 kilogram lawnmower at constant speed with a force of F equals 86.0 newtons directed along the handle, which is at an angle of 45.0 degrees to the horizontal. A. Draw the free body diagram showing all forces acting on the mower. B. Calculate the horizontal friction force on the mower. C. Calculate the normal force exerted upward vertically on the mower by the ground. And D. What force must the person exert on the lawnmower to accelerate it from rest to 1.6 meters per second in 2.6 seconds, assuming the same friction force? Now I get it, this looks like a huge problem. Four parts, lots of stuff to do. This problem is actually trying to break it up into simpler steps for you. Hey, normally speaking, this would be one problem. You would be stuck with part D, and you would have to figure out parts A, B, and C on your own in order to get to part D. So this, this problem is actually scaffolding um, the process for you. Hey, but nonetheless, hey, why not? Let's go ahead and do it. Um, part A requires us to draw a free body diagram uh, with all the forces acting on the lawnmower. So I'm going to do my very simple yet artistic sketch of a lawnmower first. So we've got our giant body here, the rectangle, we've got our wheels, clearly proportional, and we've got our handle, also the correct length. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We've got the diagram. Now let's look at all the forces acting on this lawnmower. And okay, the first and easiest one is gravity, right? Because we know there's a gravitational force acting on this lawnmower. So FG is coming down. Now the lawnmower sits on the ground and due to the force of gravity going down, uh, the ground pushes back up on the lawnmower. That's called the normal force going up. Um, the question does imply um, a frictional force. Friction always opposes the direction of motion. So if the lawnmower is going forward, the frictional force goes backward. Okay, It tries to slow you down. So it has to go opposite the direction of motion. So there's friction. And finally, the person's pushing on the handle, right? So they're pushing down on the handle, right? They're pushing down. So whenever you draw your free body diagram, it's really good practice to draw the forces coming out of the center of the body. Generally speaking, it's the center of mass, but for simplicity purposes, we'll just draw it coming out of the center of where the object looks like the center is. So this applied force is going down. So if you imagine this going all the way through, it's going to go through like this. So the force of the push person uh, pushing on the lawnmower is actually going down on an angle. Okay, so that's going to be FP for F person, and that is done at a 45 degree angle. This is going to come in real handy later. Okay, so there's our free body diagram. That's the answer to part A. Now, although it was not required in this part, I'm going to go ahead and define my positive directions because after all, I'm going to need them regardless. So I'm going to let positive V up and to the right. So I'm going to let right the X up the Y. It's going to help with my uh, labeling purposes and subscripts later. Okay, let's hop into part B. Calculate the horizontal friction force on the mower. So for part B, we're dealing with the horizontal direction. So take a look at the horizontal direction, right? In the horizontal direction, yeah, we've got friction. And check this out. For FP, it has components in both the horizontal and the vertical direction. So the only forces that have horizontal components are friction and FP. FP's horizontal component is right here. That's FPX. And of course, if you completed that right angle triangle down here, you'd get FPY. Okay, we're only dealing with FPX here, but take a look at that. The arrow is actually going to the right. So this is in the positive X direction, whereas friction is in the negative X direction. Okay, so here's the thing also. In the question, we're told the lawnmower is moving at constant speed big trigger word there. Constant speed implies that acceleration is equal to zero. And like I said in the earlier videos, that simplifies your problem a lot. And that's really necessary for a problem like this where it's long in general. Okay, so constant speed means no acceleration. Therefore, all forces in the x direction must cancel. They must balance each other. So therefore, we're saying that this force here must be equal in magnitude to that force there. Okay, so Let's take a look. So we're going to do F net X equals MAX. Okay, but we just stated that acceleration is zero, right? Because we're moving at constant speed according to the question. Zero times any number is zero. That cancels out the right side. So we're left with F net X equals zero. Now, in the X direction, we've got FPX minus F friction. 
and that's equal to zero. So let's bring the friction to the right side, making it positive. Fpx is equal to force of friction. Now, Fpx, let's, let's, how do we find that? Hey, Fpx is one component of this original vector Fp, right? It's actually the adjacent to the angle 45 degrees, which we've been given, which represents cosine from Sokotoa. So Fpx is, in fact, Fp cosine 45 degrees. And in the question, we're told that the person pushes with a force of 86.0 newtons. So that's what goes here. 86.0 newtons times cosine 45 degrees equals force of friction. Okay, so all you need to do is plug that into your calculator and you end up with force of friction equals, the number you get out is 60.8 newtons. And that is correct to the number of sig figs, um, or rather actually, in the last part we're given the 1.6, 2.6, uh, but for the first part we're given three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs, so in fact we can give the answer to three sig figs since we only use that data for this calculation. So because it's a vector, it's a force, I'm going to give a direction to it. I'm going to put the vector symbol on top of there. And my direction, I'm going to put in square brackets. The direction is back. Okay, so there's the force of friction acting on the lawnmower. Okay, now part C. Part C says, calculate the normal force exerted upward vertically on the mower by the ground. Okay, so for part C, we're looking for this force right here. So before I move on to another piece of paper here, okay, just, let's just take a look at this free body diagram. Okay, so now we're dealing with the y direction. So instead of f net x, like we did for part b, we're going to use f net y. Okay, so we've got a y vertical direction force here, here, and fp also has a y component. So whereas in the x direction we only had two forces, in the y direction we've got three, fpy, fg, fn where Fn is in the positive direction and Fg and Fpy are in the negative uh, y direction. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my Newton's second law expression for that now. Okay, let's go up here. Let's see if I can keep that on the screen. Okay, so for part C, all vertical forces have to balance out again because there's no acceleration. So no acceleration means no net force. So F net y equals zero. Okay, now We've got Fn in the positive direction, we've got Fg in the negative, and we've got Fpy in the negative. So that equals zero. Let's bring these two forces to the right. So I'm going to scroll this up a bit. Fn equals Fg plus Fpy. Fg equals Mg. Now Fpy, you do the same kind of idea. Take a look at that right angle triangle. Fpy is opposite to this angle. Opposite implies sine. So the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle is Fpy. So plus Fp sine 45 degrees. Okay. So now we just have to start plugging in our values. So mass is 13.0 kilograms. G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram plus Fp, which is 86.0 newtons, sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so our kilograms cancel there. We're going to be left with newtons, newtons, and newtons. That's what we want. Okay, so the first expression comes out to 127.4 newtons. The second part comes out to 60.8 newtons. And your final answer, your normal force, comes out to 188 newtons up. Okay, so you put your vector symbol there because we do have a direction. And there is your answer to part C. You see how fast that went? We're almost done here. We have one more part to go. Okay, last part D, what force must the person exert on the lawnmower to accelerate it from rest to 1.6 meters per second in 2.6 seconds, assuming the same friction force? Okay, so a couple things you need to notice when you look at this problem this problem. Uh, rest is given, that's the first speed, that's V naught, to 1.6 meters per second, that's V. You're given a time, so you're given V naught, V, and time. The change in speed over a time is your acceleration, right? Remember back from the earlier videos in the last section? Okay, this is kinematics. So you get your acceleration, right, and you're asked for a force. How are acceleration and force related? Well, through Newton's second law. So this is, this part D is actually a multi-step 
problem all on its own. So we're going to go ahead and do that piece by piece. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and do that. So for part D, we're going to start with what we're given. We're given V naught is equal to zero because it starts from rest. We're given our final speed of 1.6 meters per second, and we know that that takes the time of 2.6 seconds. So we can find acceleration. And by definition, remember, acceleration is the change in velocity over time. Delta V is V minus V naught over T. Plug in your numbers. 1.6 meters per second minus zero divided by 2.6 seconds. And you're going to get acceleration to be 0.615 meters per second squared. OK, so that's going to help us quite a bit. Um, we're trying to find what force the person exerts on the lawnmower. So we're actually going to go ahead and work with the x direction here. Okay, so f net x equals ma x. So you put those the vector symbols there. Let's keep working our way up. OK, actually, let's put this down a little bit. OK, good. So f net equals ma. Um, now, in the x direction, remember we've got fpx and f friction. So this is going to be fpx minus f friction equals ma. Drop the vector symbols because we put in our directions. Now, fpx, remember, it's fp cosine of 45 degrees. And I'm going to bring the friction force to the right there equals ma plus f friction. The question says assume the same friction force. So we're going to use the answer we got in part b to be 60.8 newtons. Okay, so fp cosine 45 equals ma plus f friction. So let's rearrange this for fp because we want to know the new force they have to push on. ma plus ffr divided by cosine 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to start plugging in my numbers now. Mass is 13.0 kilograms. Acceleration, we just found to be 0.615 meters per second squared. Okay, our friction force is 60.8 newtons. And we're going to divide all this by the cosine of 45 degrees. When you enter that expression in your calculator, you are going to get 97.3 newtons 45 degrees to the horizontal is the correct direction. Okay, so there is your FP. Clearly it has increased because you are accelerating it now. So you need to apply a bit more force in order to keep it going. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to Physics in the Flesh so you never miss a video from me, which, by the way, I post every weekday at 12 noon. So be sure to be on my channel at that time to catch my latest video. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I will catch you in the next video.